Hey everybody and welcome to our beginner series for Blender. If you're new to the electronic armory, we have tutorials on all things electronics, from native mobile development, software engineering, electrical engineering, and everything else to arm yourself in the digital world. Be sure to check us out at electronicarmory.com, hit us up on Facebook, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesomeness on all things electronic. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the free and open source 3D modeling and animation software, Blender. After this video, you'll be able to navigate through Blender, move objects, and change their shape. We'll also render out an image of your model. In future videos, we'll show you how to create more complex shapes in our model. Eventually, you'll be able to create whatever you can think up and make it look good too. Blender is an extremely powerful tool that not only allows you to model in 3D, but animate these models and edit that video since it's also a video editor. You can also mix live action video with your 3D models as if they were really there with Blender's spatial tracking features. Blender is also extremely popular with people who 3D print. You don't have to start your models from scratch. There are websites that you can download models for your projects or for 3D printing. Try out TurboSquid.com and Thingiverse.com. Now that you're totally enticed to learn Blender, let's get started. After downloading and installing Blender from Blender.org and launching it on your favorite operating system, you'll see Blender's interface. It's composed of a few different parts, so let's cover these very quickly and then we'll dive down deeper as needed. First off, you'll need a mouse with a middle scroll wheel. Other types of mice will work, but if you have a different type, you'll have to figure out how those particular mice work with Blender yourself. A full keyboard is also highly recommended. If you're on a laptop without a number pad, Blender can accommodate. Let me show you how to emulate a full number pad on a compact keyboard. Go up to the File menu, select User Preferences, and you'll be presented with Blender's User Preferences. In the Input menu, Go down where it says Emulate NumPad. We're going to want to check this. Again, this is if you're using a compact keyboard, say on a laptop. If you do have access to a full keyboard, if you're on a desktop or you have an external keyboard, you can leave this unchecked. Another thing I like to do in Blender is select my objects with the left mouse button. The reason I do this is because usually you're used to selecting things with the left mouse button, and Blender is quite the opposite where you select with the right mouse button. This is a personal preference for you, but in my videos, I'm going to have the left mouse button be the one that actually selects. So to change that, we go up to the select with option and select left. So that changes it from right selection to left selection. Now go down where it says save user settings. If you don't hit this button before closing your user preferences, the next time you open Blender, all your changes will be lost. So click save user settings, close the window, and now we're back to the Blender user interface. All right, we're going to do a very quick overview of the interface. On the left-hand side, you have your Tools menu. These mostly allow you to manipulate objects within Blender. We'll go through these in detail in a later video. Next in the middle, we have our 3D view. This is where we're going to be forming most of our 3D manipulation and modeling. You can see in Blender's default scene, we just have a camera that's over here on the left, a 3D cube, and a light. You can see the 3D cube has three axes on it, blue, the z-axis going up, green, the y-axis going off to the right of the screen, and red, the x-axis coming kind of toward us. We'll look at how to manipulate this cube in a little more detail in a second. On the right-hand side, we have our information bar. Near the top here, we have all the objects in our scene. So we have a camera, a cube, a light, an object that represents the world, and what's called render layers. We'll get into that again in a future video. Under that, we have a bunch of tabs to help manipulate our objects. And you can see the current tab that's selected is called the Scene tab, and under that we have a bunch of render options. We're not going to worry about that right now. We are going to use these, but we're not going to change anything. Along the bottom of the screen, we actually have an animation timeline. This goes from 0 to 250 frames. You can see this green bar here. And we're not going to worry about that now, but this is actually how you do your animations. You set up your animations per frame, and this is partially where we do that. Okay, so that's the general idea of the default Blender interface. We're not going to go too much into detail because we don't really need to go into detail to start manipulating our objects. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, let's talk about Blender's most interesting view, the 3D view, here in the center where our cube is. In the default view, you'll see a cube with what is actually the camera from which you will render your 3D image from and a light to light your model. With your mouse, click and hold the middle mouse button and move the mouse around. You'll see you're able to spin and tumble the model. Next, use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out of the model. 
Finally, hold the shift key and hold the middle mouse button down and move the mouse around. This will pan the model in the direction you move your mouse. Get comfortable with these before you move on. Once you're fairly comfortable spinning and tumbling your model around, zooming in, panning, etc., I'm going to show you two types of views that you can view your model in, orthographic and perspective. By default, we're in perspective. Perspective shows the model with depth. It does this by making the objects farther away appear smaller. And likewise, objects that are closer appear larger. This is how objects in the natural world will behave. You'll notice the grid lines converge as they lead away from us and diverge as they come toward us. If you hover your mouse over to the 3D view and press the number 5 on your keypad, you'll switch into orthographic mode. Blender shortcuts tend to act on the view that your mouse has hovered over, while other shortcuts affect the entire application. I'll try to call them out as they work. So, the orthographic view shows the objects along parallel grid lines, meaning objects do not get smaller or larger the farther or closer they are. This mode will be helpful in certain aspects of modeling. Let's switch back to perspective by hovering our mouse over the 3D view and pressing the 5 on our keypad. Once we're back in perspective, and we can tell that by the label up here in the top left hand corner, press the number 1 key on your keyboard. Make sure to hover your mouse over the 3D view for this to work. This will show us the front of the model. If you hit the 5 key and switch into orthographic, you'll see the grid appear. Press 3 on the number pad to go into right view. 7 to go into top view. If you hold down the control key and press 1, you'll see the back view instead of the front. Control 3 will show the left hand side and control 7 will show the bottom. That's pretty much it for navigating your view around your model. We'll get into more advanced techniques in the future, but in the meantime, play around with it, get used to it, and memorize the keyboard shortcuts. You'll be using them a lot. Okay, now that you've got the basics of moving our model, let's do something a little more interesting. Let's show you how to move our object around. Let's find a good view. That looks good. Make sure the model is selected by left clicking on it if you chose the left select option in the user preferences. If you left it the default, it's going to be right click. If it's orange, you know it's selected. Now hover your mouse over the 3D view and hit the G key, then move your mouse. You'll see the model moves with respect to your mouse. Left click to stop moving the model. If you rotate your view around, you'll see that the model was left where you put it, but maybe not where you thought it would be. In our example, it's kind of off to the right a little bit. When you move the object in this manner, Blender moves the model along the same plane as the view. So let's try this again. Hit the G key, move your mouse, and let's put it right about there. Now it kind of looks like it's right on the floor of the grid. I'm going to left click to unselect it and drop it where the mouse is, and then we're going to rotate our view so that we can see where we actually did leave it. Now you can see that it totally went way up in the air. It wasn't anywhere near the grid line. So again, Blender uses the move tool when you just hit the G key to move it along the plane of where you're viewing it. So we're kind of looking down at a top down angle and so it was going to move left and right up and down based on that view. Most likely though you'll want to move the model along the X, Y, or Z axis. Hit Ctrl or Command Z to undo your move to put the model back. So now it's back in the center. Again, hit G, but this time hit the Z key to constrain the move along the Z axis. Press the X key to, and move your mouse. Press the Y key and move the mouse. You'll see the model constrained to each of the X, Y, and Z axes. So again, we can constrain our model in the Z axis or the up and down by pressing the Z key. So no matter if we move our mouse left or right, it'll always stay in that plane. If we hit the Y key, it'll always stay on the X axis and the X key again. And so using this technique, if I want to keep it on the z-axis, what I can do is I can move it along the x, hit g, move it along the y. Now when I rotate it, it's always where it was on the z-axis. Now as I'm moving this thing around and I hit the g key, and let's say I want to constrain it to the x-axis, moving it back and forth along that red axis, and I want to move the model very, very slightly. Well, it's kind of hard to move your mouse in small increments. And so what you can do is, if you hold down the shift key and move your mouse, you'll see that the model moves slower. When moving or changing parameters, you can often hit the shift key to fine tune the change. 
take your finger off the shift key and it goes back to normal. And you can hit the escape key to cancel the move. Okay, I'm going to undo that to put it back in the center. Next, hit the R key, again with your mouse hovered over the 3D view, and move your mouse. You'll see that this rotates our object. Just like the G key, the R key is used to rotate our model and can be constrained to the X, Y, and Z axis as well. Give it a try. So while I'm still rotating the model, I can hit the Z. And this will spin it around the Z as if the Z was going right through it, acting as an axle. If I hit the Y key, now it's spinning around the Y key. And I can spin this around here, either counterclockwise or clockwise. Hit the X key and rotate it as if that X axis is an axle. Okay, I'm gonna hit escape to cancel that as I'm in the move. That's still not that interesting, but moving in 3D on a 2D screen is a bit complex, so it can be a little tricky. Now let's get to the good stuff, actually manipulating the shape of our model. With your cube selected, hit the tab key. This will put you in edit mode. You can see what mode you're in by looking in the lower part of the 3D view. Hit the tab again and you'll see Edit Mode turn into Object Mode. Edit Mode allows us to edit a model's vertices. Object Mode allows us to manipulate the entire object as a whole. We'll explain the intricacies of these two modes in future videos. Just like other keyboard shortcuts in Blender, we have to hover our mouse over the 3D view in order to toggle between Object Mode and Edit Mode. If we try to do that outside of the 3D view, it doesn't work. So again, make sure your mouse is over the 3D view, hit Tab, and we go back into Object Mode. Tab again, edit mode. Okay, so now that we're in edit mode, you'll see that our cube now has some vertices. Let's zoom in and then we can see these. Rotate it a little bit by holding down the middle mouse key and moving our mouse. And you can see that there are little boxes on each corner of our cube. Click on one of these to select it. We can select any one of these, just like that. Now hold the shift key to select multiple. Now you see I've selected four vertices which make up a face of our cube. To deselect all vertices, press the A key. To select everything, hit the A key again. The A key will toggle between selecting everything and deselecting what's selected. This works in object mode as well. Remember how to move our model? Moving vertices works the same exact way. Select a few vertices. Let's say this one and this corner one by holding the shift key and selecting. Now hit the G key. Constrain the movement using the X, Y, and Z key. Hit escape if you want to cancel the move. Now let's make a more interesting shape. Select the top four vertices by holding down the shift key and clicking on them. You might have to hit the A key to first deselect what you have selected. Okay, so using the G key to move our vertices around and the R key to rotate them, I'm going to rotate and move these vertices along the X, Y, and Z axes. So for starters, I'm going to move this along the X axis, click, hit G and then Y to move along the Y axis, deselect some of these vertices by holding down the shift and deselecting them, and again moving them around, G, Z. And now, now I want to rotate these around, so I'm going to use the R key to rotate them around, but I'm going to constrain it to the Z axis and rotate that around, let's say right about there. Select some other vertices, play around with these a little bit. So hitting G, X, moving this back a little bit. And maybe selecting all top four here. Hitting R, Z again, rotating that around, maybe move that back along the Y and just play around with it until you get a nice interesting shape. Now you might have noticed that these blue, green, and red arrows are kind of sticking out wherever I have selected. Because I have four vertices selected, this appears in the middle of those. This is our manipulator tool, and you can also move your objects or vertices using this tool by selecting each one of these axes and moving them. So that's the z-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis. All right, once you have something interesting, let's render out an image of our model. The image will be rendered from the perspective of our camera. You can move and rotate it just like any other object, placing it in different parts of your scene to render out different images. If you do want to move it, make sure you're in object mode first by hitting the tab key, selecting the camera, and again, you can move that and manipulate it however you want. In our case, we're just going to leave it right there for now. Now to see what the camera sees, just like our different perspectives by hitting the one key, the three key, 
and the 7 key and their control variants, the back, the left, and the bottom view, we can see what the camera sees by pressing the 0 key. Now you can see the outline of what our camera is going to see, and if we hit the F12 key, we can render this image out. The next thing I want to show you is we're going to use the Cycles Render Engine to render our image. Switch it from Blender Render, which we're currently using, to Cycles Render by clicking on the drop down and selecting it. So find where it says Cycle Render and select it. Next, hit the F12 key again on your keyboard and the render will start. It's a simple model with simple materials in one light, so you can see it rendered very quickly, but it rendered in a very different manner than the Blender Render Engine did. This is because Cycles Render uses what's called ray tracing. You can think about this as photons coming out of your light, and the ones that bounce into the camera are the ones that the camera sees and thus renders to your image. This is more physically realistic and very similar to the way that the real world works, and so this is the way you're going to get their more realistic images. Let's go ahead and save this image. It is, after all, probably your first render ever. You can go down to the Image Save As Image menu item, or simply press F3. Choose a save location and a name for your image, and press the Save As Image button. If this is your first image, congratulations. Stick with it. Soon you'll be making beautiful renders. It might seem complex at first, but we've showed you the features you'll be using 70% of the time. We're not quite there yet, of course, and the final 30% gets a little bit more complex, but in future videos, we'll show you how these, combined with additional Blender features, will make modeling 3D fun and relatively easy. Manipulating vertices will become second nature, and you'll only be limited by your imagination. Thanks for watching, and I hope this was a helpful introduction to Blender. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe, leave a comment below, and like this video. And we'll be sure to make more tutorials that are practical in the real-world 3D pipeline that center around practicality rather than just showing you different tools. We'll actually create real objects that you'll probably want to use in your own projects. And also tips and tricks of a professional studio and how we work in 3D when we develop our 3D models for our mobile games and virtual reality simulations. All right, and that's all I have for you. And until next time, I'm your Electronic Armor for Blender. And if you'd like to check out more videos on all things electronics, head over to electronicarmory.com. Don't forget to subscribe.